If you would, open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. The book of the Revelation chapter number 1. And once you find your place there, I invite you to stand in honor of reading God's word. Revelation chapter number 1. Last week we discussed verses 4 through 6. Today we're going to discuss verses 7 and 8. Next week we will probably finish the chapter, chapter 1, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to begin reading in verse 4 like we did last week. Uh, we talked about a blessing uh, last week, uh, uh, a strange blessing. And uh, as we look in verse 4, it says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and may, hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, I ask that you would once again empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I ask that you would help us tonight to stay focused, Lord, and we would be able to understand and see what we have here before us tonight. Thank you. Lord, I love you. I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I we'll ask that God bless the reading of his word. This evening I want to speak to you on the subject, Every Eye Will See Him. Every Eye Will See Him. Now we're going to be going through some scripture tonight. Uh, and so it might take us a little while to get through it because I have several scriptures here. Now, we're not going to read all of them, but we're going to read most of them. Talking about his second coming. This is what it here is that John is speaking to in verses 7 and 8. Because we do know at the rapture not every eye will see him. Only those of us, his church will be the only ones. We'll hear the shout, we'll hear the trumpet, and we'll, and we'll be off. And we'll be able to see him. But the second coming, as it is mentioned in verse number 7, everyone will see him, so every eye will see him. Let's look at the beginning in verse number 7, the announcement of his coming. The announcement of his coming, of his coming. He says, Behold, he cometh. That's an announcement. Whenever we would see, you know, the State of the Union, when Trump or every president that we could see on television make the State of the U Union, uh, they would make an announcement, the president, uh, Mr. Speaker, and whoever else, the president of the United States, well, here John is saying, uh, as he's here being, uh, as this angel is speaking to him, he's writing down the announcement, Behold, he cometh. Not only do we see this announcement, but there are several things we're going to see in this announcement. The first thing we see is the identity of who is coming. Now, we do know that this is the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, so we know 
that who is identified is Jesus is coming. We see the identity of Jesus. The Messiah is coming. His second coming. And I have here six or seven things about his coming. The first thing I have is he's coming again because God promised it. God promised he's coming. We could go back to uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, okay, if we go back to Jeremiah, I went too far in mind. Jeremiah, and if we look in ver- chapter 23, we will see Jeremiah in chapter uh, 23. And verse number 5, we're going to see this in chapter 23, verse 5, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days shall Ju- uh, in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And in, uh, and this is the his name written. He shall be called the Lord our righteous. Verse seven. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall. No more say the Lord liveth and brought up the uh, say the no more say the Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of, Je- of Egypt, but the Lord liveth which, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from uh, and from all countries whether I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. Listen, the Messiah, Jesus, is coming again. Why? The first reason we see is because God promised it. God promised it in the, uh, there in Jeremiah. We also see the Messiah is coming. Why do we see? How do we see he's coming? He's coming again because Jesus promised it. He promised it in, in chapter 2, verse uh, 16. We see... Where repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them which with the sword of my mouth. Of course, he's speaking uh, uh, to the church of Pergamos. And then also in chapter 3, verse 11, Jesus speaks Behold, I come quickly, hold fast which thou hast that no man take that crown. Also, and we can also go into Revelation chapter 22 and, and look at verse number 7. Uh, 22, uh, verse number 7 says, Behold, I come quickly, Jesus said. And so we know he's coming again first because God promised it. Secondly, Jesus promised it. We see that the Messiah, that Jesus is coming again. He's coming again because the Holy Ghost guaranteed it. The Holy Ghost guaranteed it. Turn to John chapter 14. John in chapter number 14. We see in John chapter 14, in verse number 26. 14 verse 26 here is is Jesus speaking, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, from the Father will I send in my name, and he shall teach you what? All things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit guarantees that. So who do we have the first three, the first three things we have on the promises? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is promising that Jesus will come again. Not only do we have those three things, but he's coming again because not only did God promise it, Jesus promised it, the Holy Spirit guaranteed it, but he's coming again because he promised his church that he would come again. Jesus promised his church that he would come again. We could, all, we could go back to Acts chapter 1. Acts in chapter 1 and see that he's coming again uh, when... The disciples were at the, the apostles were at the mount, right? And one is where we have uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. 
uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 9, where he, here it says that, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received him out of their sight. And while they looked up steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you uh, into heaven, shall so, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And so we know that the church was promised, because that's who was there, right? The church was there when he went up, and so the church has been promised that he will come again. And he's going to come, and, he's all, and we also know that he's going to come again because he's going to judge the nations. He's going to come and judge the nations. If we look in Philippians, in chapter number 2, in verse 10, where, uh, in chapter 2, verse 10, it says that, that at that, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So listen, when he comes, we know that he's going to come, and he's going to uh, sit uh, uh, at the judgment seat in Jerusalem, and he's going to come, and he's going to judge all the nations. If we go back to uh, Revelation and chapter 1, and looking at the uh, end of verse, cha- uh, verse 7, it says that all, uh, uh, all the nations, all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. He's coming back. God, the, uh, God promised it. Jesus promised it. The Holy Ghost uh, guarantees it. He's coming back uh, because he promised the church and because he's going to judge the nations. He's coming again because Israel will turn to Jesus as the Messiah. Romans chapter 11 talks about that. Uh, The whole chapter of Romans 11 discusses how Israel will look to Jesus as the Messiah. Because it also says in verse 7 that every eye will see him and they also, which what? Pierced him. Who's that? The Jews, right? Right? The Jews are the one that pierced him. So he, he's coming back, uh, and the Jews will look to him as the Messiah. He's coming again because he must come in his glory. See, Jesus didn't come in his glory the first time, did he? No, no, he, 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 he came humbly. In Matthew chapter uh, 26, we see that it uh, speaks about that when he comes again, in his, when he comes again, that he's going to be coming in his glory. In chapter 26, verse 64, we see here it says, that Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming, look at this, in the clouds of heaven. You know, when we talk about uh, him coming in the clouds in here in Matthew, it also talks about it uh, here in, uh, uh, in verse number 7, and also in Acts chapter 1 where it says the two men uh, in verse uh, number 11 says that, it, that he goes up and the clouds swallow him up, that he's going to come back in the same manner. Those clouds represent his presence and his glory. Now remember... Uh, how that God led them out of Egypt? How did he lead them out of Egypt? What was in front of them during the day? The Shekinah glory cloud, right? That represents his, power, his presence and his glory. So when Jesus comes again, he's not going to come down uh, humbly as a servant. No, he's going to come down and he's going to show it and he's going to come down in his glory with clouds. Now, can you, now, now listen, we're going to be out of here by then. All right, but uh, think, think of the believers 
that are going to be in, during the tribulation who get saved during the tribulation and they see his cloud coming, not just his own cloud, uh, the believers coming, but can you imagine what the, all the nations when they see him coming down in the cloud and it says that, they, that they're going to well. Can you imagine the, the anxiety, the, uh, the, what they're going to be feeling that Jesus, the God of the universe, is going to be coming down in the clouds to this earth, his second coming. What a sight that would be to see. At the end of the tribulation, when he comes down, not only, not only the believers and those nations, no, but, but, but uh, Israel, the Jews, the, the non-believing Jews are going to see him come. Then you're going to have the eyes wide open. He's coming again, and when he comes, he's coming in glory. We see the announcement, and when he comes, he's coming with the clouds. We see the glory of his coming. We, saw the, we see the announcement there in the verse 7, Behold, he cometh. The second thing we saw was we see uh, the glory of his coming. Where in verse 7 it says, with clouds. Not only that, but we see, uh, we see the witnesses of his coming, as we discussed a second ago, that every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth will well because of him. If we, the whole world will see him, if we, if we turn back to Ze, uh, Zechariah, it's the, the, last, the last one there, Zechariah, uh, turn back to Zechariah chapter 12, right before Malachi, Zechariah chapter 12, if we see in verse number 10, this is what it says. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his own son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. He told them, Zechariah, I'm coming. And those of you that are going to pierce me, you're going to see me. The witnesses, the whole earth, including the Jews, are going to see him. We have the announcement that he's coming. The glory. We see the glory of his coming. We see the witnesses of his coming. And... The last there at the verse in the end of verse seven, we're going to see the believer's response. What's John's response? Even so. When he says even so, what is he saying? Come on. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Our response as a believer today ought to be. Come on, even so, Lord, come. Because the quicker he comes, the quicker we get out of here. Look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. As he says, even uh, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come. That's what John writes. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. That should be our response. And that will be the response of those believers that are going through the tribulation. We see the, his announcement. We see he's coming in glory. We see the witnesses of his coming. We, saw, we look at the believer's response of his coming. And lastly... 
we have the assurance of his coming. At the beginning, we talked about it on his announcement that we know he's coming because God promised it. Yes, God promised it, but if you look at verse 8, he signed it. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. What's those last two words? The what? Almighty. We know he's coming. Again, not only from what we've discussed already, and the many, many verses that are dedicated to his second coming in the Bible, God said he put his signature on it, the Almighty. The Alpha and the Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega, the Almighty God signs his name that Jesus is coming again. Now listen, I know that we that this has been preached since Jesus since Jesus went up on that mount. The church has been preaching this for 2,000 years. Right? Almost 2,000 years. In 2030, in 2033, we've been 2,000 years that the church has been preaching this. And I know that in this world, be, as we live in this world, that the things of this world can be overwhelming to us and we can get caught up, can't we? We have bills, children to raise, get married, all these things. Folks, he's coming back. I have three questions I want to ask you. Do you know he's coming back? Do you know it? Or is it, it do you know it here? Because I, I could pretty much say all of us in here and watching live stream know it here. But did you know, do you know it here? Because if you know it here and you don't know it here, it doesn't affect you. You'd be like when we talked about uh, in Amos, oh, we know he's coming. The sayers that say, oh, they've been saying that for years. Because that's what we hear, don't we? Oh, don't tell me he's... Listen, y'all been preaching Jesus is coming back uh, for years. Uh, uh, 2,000 years y'all been preaching that he's coming back. Yes, if you have it here and not here, uh, there's no affection. But listen, if you have it in your heart and knowing that Jesus is coming here, is knowing that he is coming back, it will affect your whole life. It will affect your entire life. What do you mean it's going to affect my entire life? Well, knowing in your heart that he is coming back, uh, are you willing to live like he's coming again? Are you willing to live like he's coming again? And if, we're, if we believe it in our heart, not, just, not know it in our head, then are you preparing for it? We say, well, Brother Mark, uh, we're not going to be here during, when his, in his second coming. No, no, you're right. We're not going to be here when he comes again. But we can prepare for it by reaching as many folks as we can with the gospel so they don't have to go through it. Because his second coming is not going to be a fun day for this world. It's not going to be a fun day for those that continue to reject Christ. That's how we prepare for it. We also prepare for his coming by being that witness and spending our life on him. Spending our life on him.
for the believer, his second coming, verses 7 and 8, in his glory, what we read, what we see in Scripture ought to affect the heart. And when your heart is affected, your behavior change is affected. Because what you believe is the way you live, the way you act. He's coming back. Every eye on this planet will see that second coming. Do you believe it? Do you know it? If you do, your life ought to live it. My life ought to live it. I can't allow this world, I can't allow this world to get me all caught up into it. Listen, I am no different than anyone else. I struggle with everything just like anybody else. But at the forefront of my mind, I need to have frontlets in front of me reminding me, Mark, he's coming, and you need to live like it. Do you believe it? Do you know it? Will you live like it? Father, as we conclude this evening, Lord, your word tells us every eye will see him, will see Jesus in his second coming. Not only will every eye see it, Lord, but you sign it that he's coming back. Lord, all the promises we have in your word, you promise it, Jesus promised it, the Holy Spirit Signifies it, guarantees it. Or may we live as we believe it. Or I ask that you would guide and direct us this evening. Or that you would have your will, your will and your way in the invitation. Father, May our hearts be affected by what we see this evening in your word. I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand as the music begins to play.